by using the Markdown nodes in Obsidian, you're future-proofing your ability to connect this to AI or connect this to any other software that you may want to use in the future. So personally, that's one of the main reasons that I got into using Obsidian in the first place. You're able to give the AI a ton of context on who you are and how you like to write and how you like to think, and the AI will be able to augment that personal knowledge management in a private and a secure way because all of your markdown files in Obsidian are local. They're just on your local device. So I think this is a really great way for you to begin thinking about the future and how technology is changing and how you can leverage your note taking to really stay ahead of the curve when it comes to artificial intelligence and generally just moving forward in this uncertain future. Hello, my name is Callum, also known as Wanderlutz, and welcome to today's video on why I migrated to Obsidian for my note taking and how you can do the same. Obsidian is by far the best note-taking app that I've ever used. I started with Apple Notes, then moved to OneNote, and then moved to Notion before moving to Obsidian, and I haven't looked back. Obsidian has helped me boost my writing habits, allowing me to publish over 200,000 words in my newsletter and on my blog. And it's by far the best way that I've ever come across to consistently keep track of my thoughts and ideas and help cultivate them over time using all of the powerful features that I'm going to get into in a moment. Since using Obsidian, I journal more regularly. I'm better able to keep track of my ideas and then cultivate those ideas into my long form writing and these YouTube videos. I'm always able to find exactly what I'm looking for. And rather than starting new notes from scratch as I have different ideas, I'm able to build off of the time and attention that I've invested in that note taking in the past. In a sense, it's allowed me to start taking smart notes, notes that I actually use and build off of rather than ones that I just take and then never look at again. Obsidian's features allow me to surface these insights and continue building on my ideas over time so I never have to start from scratch again. You can imagine each note that you take as a bundle of time and attention. You spend time and energy focusing on using your attention to write out these notes and build out your ideas. Obsidian allows you to take that invested time and attention and build off it to pay out dividends in the long run as you're able to connect these ideas and thoughts together in ways that you may never have thought of if you didn't have the linking system in Obsidian. For example, I often have new ideas and each new idea I have, I think is the best idea ever. So I'll go and write it into Obsidian and I'll give the note a new title. But as I start typing in the title, the note auto populates and tells me, oh, hey, there's a note that has almost this exact same title with this idea that you did six months ago or 12 months ago. So when I click back into that note, I can see that I had a very similar idea to the one I'm having right now. Rather than starting a new note from scratch, I'm able to quickly take a look at what I did in the past, the previously invested time and attention, and I can just continue that idea from where I left off before. This also helps me approach my ideas from different perspectives because the inspiration that sparked the idea likely varies depending on my frame of mind at the particular time I had the idea. So this has really allowed me to scale my ideas and build them out and connect them in ways that I had never been able to do before in any other note-taking system. Obsidian has a few features as a note-taking app that really makes it stand out to me. These are the reasons why once I came and started using Obsidian, I haven't left yet. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk through a few of my favorite features in Obsidian just briefly to tell you why I think you would benefit from migrating to a system like this. And then I'll get into how you can migrate from a few different note-taking apps like Apple Notes, OneNote, and Notion. If after watching this video, you find yourself wanting to dive deeper into Obsidian, I have a tutorial video that walks through all of the major features of Obsidian and how you can get started with nonlinear note-taking. It's called Obsidian for Beginners, and a lot of people have told me that it's the best overview of Obsidian that they've seen, so I think that you would probably find it helpful as well. Okay, now let's get into a few of my favorite features of Obsidian. Since I go so much more in depth on all of these features in my Obsidian for Beginners video, I'm just gonna briefly outline them. So the first major feature is called bi-directional linking, or linking. This is where in Obsidian you can use two square brackets and you can create a note title that links from one note to another. So this is a really powerful system because not only is it a singular link, like you would think about with a website where it takes you somewhere, but because it's bi-directional, it goes both ways. When one note is linked to another, they're both able to reference each other. This helps you really move through your train of thought and follow the connections that you're making between different concepts. The second feature related to this one is the graph view. This is a visual representation of what's called a knowledge graph. And this is where you take all of those notes that you've been linking using the bi-directional linking in Obsidian, and you're able to visualize a graph showing you how these connections appear, and more importantly, how clusters of information appear as you connect your information together to form knowledge. 
the overall graph view might not be that helpful, but it is interesting to look at. What I personally find more helpful is the local graph view. And what this means is you're able to open up the connections for one specific note and expand out the concentric circles of how many notes are connected to it. This I have found to be a really great way for connecting one idea to another and then seeing how I can bring in different topics related to my previous idea into the new one. This is what really has helped spark a lot of my inspiration for my writing in my newsletter and for my YouTube videos. Knowledge graphs are such an effective way of organizing and connecting information that this is actually how Google operates. And this is what's going to be a very powerful way to ingest information and knowledge into your own personal AI assistant, which I'll get more into in a moment. The third feature in Obsidian is templating. So you can think of a template as a building block. You're able to go create almost a cookie cutter, an outline of what you want a particular note to have. And then all you have to do is press a single button. And every time you use that template to create a note, it'll populate the note with all of that information. So I use this as part of my Zettelkasten system, as part of my newsletter, my YouTube template. I have templates for all different kinds of notes. So when I'm about to go create a note, for example, because I'm reading a book, I have a source note for books that I will use to automatically populate that template, which provides a spot for me to instantly begin writing down my thoughts and ideas and quotes from that book without having to think about how to organize it or where to move that note. This saves me a ton of time and energy and prevents overthinking because I don't have to worry about how I'm going to format a note or where I'm going to put it. By applying the template, the note format is automatically created and it automatically moves into the proper folder where I want it to end up being. I would love if you would please consider subscribing and sharing with a friend. Word of mouth and subscribing are by far the best way that you can continue supporting me so that I can continue making these videos that hopefully you and many other people will find helpful. As I'm working on making YouTube my full-time career, your support means more and more to me. If you're interested in joining my paid membership, I do have an option available where I give out templates to my paying subscribers. And these members are the ones that are helping me continue to afford making these videos. So thank you very much for subscribing and I appreciate your support more than you know. The fourth feature is that Obsidian operates on Markdown files. You can think of Markdown as the most basic form of text editor. It's kind of like a TXT file where it just has the basic information, but you're able to apply slight changes like a single hashtag, for example, is header one, two hashtags is header two, three hashtags is header three. If you put an asterisk around your word, it creates italics. So there's a really simple way of formatting that allows any other software to read that format and understand the formatting that you've applied to it. You can think of it like the most basic building block of text editing on digital systems. It doesn't have any particular proprietary formatting for it, like Notion or Word. And a good example of this is using Notebook LM, Google's AI software, you're actually able to drag and drop markdown files like from Obsidian, but you can't add Word files and you can't add Notion files. This is because Notion and Microsoft have walls that prevent how people can migrate from one system to another. By using the Markdown notes in Obsidian, you're future-proofing your ability to connect this to AI or connect this to any other software that you may want to use in the future. So personally, that's one of the main reasons that I got into using Obsidian in the first place. I think that future-proofing your personal knowledge management, your second brain, is going to become more and more important as our systems begin to integrate more with artificial intelligence. Imagine now you have your own fully secure, private artificial intelligence personal assistant, and it's able to read your knowledge graph. It's able to read the database, your knowledge base that you've created in Obsidian. You're able to give the AI a ton of context on who you are and how you like to write and how you like to think, and the AI will be able to augment that personal knowledge management in a private and a secure way because all of your markdown files in Obsidian are local. They're just on your local device. So I think this is a really great way for you to begin thinking about the future and how technology is changing and how you can leverage your note taking to really stay ahead of the curve when it comes to artificial intelligence and generally just moving forward in this uncertain future. Related to Markdown, the fifth major feature that I want to talk about is plugins. So a plugin is effectively a way where you can take your Markdown notes and you can interpret them in different ways. For example, one is called Data View. And data view allows you to take the metadata, the properties associated with your notes, and you can query it to produce databases that reference specific notes based on tags and topics and connections and many other things. So by operating in Markdown, you're able to connect to the vast library of plugins that Obsidian has to offer. The last time I checked, there were over 2000 plugins. So really this is a way for you to start with the basic building blocks of Markdown, but then interpret your notes in any way that's gonna be the best and most optimal system for you your personal knowledge management. 
Another example plugin is the Daily Note plugin. And this plugin is what has helped me improve my journaling and get into a consistent writing habit over time. I actually just made a video that walks through the Daily Note plugin and how I personally use that system. So if you're interested in learning more about how you can begin getting a consistent writing system going using the plugins in Obsidian, I recommend checking out that video. Another one of my favorite plugins is the Digital Garden plugin. And this is how I'm able to actually take my Obsidian Vault, select specific notes that I wanna make public, and then publish them to my Digital Garden at wanderlutes.xyz, and I can do all of this for free. So it's kind of cool that you're able to use Obsidian, select specific portions of your vault, your database, your knowledge base that you've been creating, and then publish those particularly selected nodes so that other people can see them. So altogether, Obsidian really provides a system that's as customizable and personalizable as possible. You can make the system into anything you want using all of the different plugins and templates. You can make this system work for you and you can structure it in any way that you find personally helpful. Each of us thinks differently, so it makes sense that you would wanna have a note-taking system that's as customizable as possible. I've personally found that this has boosted my creativity and productivity more than any other note-taking system. So I highly recommend checking it out. You can make it as simple or complex as you want to. Okay, so now that I've gone through and selected them all, I'm going to click import. It was my true first second brain where I kept and dumped all of my ideas. So I'm excited to finally import this into Obsidian. It looks like it even kept pretty much the entire formatting. So that's pretty impressive because lots of times when you go to import a note from a different piece of software, it completely screws up the formatting and the notes end up being kind of unusable. So I'm glad that this worked well. Wow, yeah, so there were 1,500 notes that it was gonna pull in. Okay, cool. I mean, it looks like it actually pulled everything in pretty well and it might even have the proper links. But now that you're here, once you've moved your notes into Obsidian, what next? There's so many different ways that you can customize your personal knowledge management system. I know it can feel pretty overwhelming. That's why I've created a playlist where I've been working on building out different features like tags and topics and plugins, all of my favorite elements of Obsidian that I've put into my digital garden playlist here. So if you're interested in expanding how you can use Obsidian once you've imported your notes, I recommend taking a look at that playlist because a lot of people have been finding it very helpful and I hope that you do as well. In particular, I think that the Obsidian for Beginners video is a great place to start because this one walks through all of my favorite features in Obsidian and goes more in depth on how to actually practically use each of these features in a way that beginners can understand. So I recommend checking out that video if you're looking to expand your Obsidian use. And if you're interested in looking at how I publish these notes from Obsidian into my digital garden at wanderlutes.xyz, I recommend checking out my website, my digital garden, because this shows you a good example on how you can create different types of notes and link them together in a way that you're also able to publish if you want to. A few other videos in that playlist are tags, topics, and maps of content, how I organize my Obsidian notes for emergence to try and generate emergent insights rather than just linear note-taking systems. And related to that one, I also have an automatic inbox and index tutorial where I show you how you can move notes into specific folders and then using the tags from the organization system, query those folders to produce indexes so that you can find notes a lot more easily and just keep track of your knowledge as it continues to grow in Obsidian. And if you're looking to kickstart your vault with a more comprehensive system for note-taking, I recommend checking out my molecular Zettelkasten video. Zettelkasten is one of the most productive note-taking systems of all time that many people have migrated to Obsidian specifically to use. So I walk through how I set up my Zettelkasten system. And if you're looking to get a downloadable copy of my vault that I use for my molecular Zettelkasten, I have made it available for my paying YouTube members. So if you're interested in supporting me for the videos I'm making and want to get the added perk of a beginner's vault for Obsidian using the Zettelkasten method, I recommend checking out my channel and consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.